coming up on Bond Boat Rescue. A tricky little surgery in the tower. <laughs> Maxie and Glick, up close and personal with a shark. Boy, he's 100% shark, straight out here. And every lifeguard's fear. A swimmer pulled from the water, not breathing. Take me back to the sweet times, the hot nights. Everything is gonna be alright in the summertime. Baby, in the summertime, that is where I'll be. Bondi's world famous stretch of sand is a magnet for beachgoers. Lifeguards patrol the beach, switching their time between the shoreline and the tower. Lately, though, Jesse has been spending more time in the tower than he'd normally like. I'm in the tower this summer because I had an accident at the start of the season. I got washed on the rocks south of the icebergs and uh, fractured my pelvis, hip and coccyx. I find it pretty funny that uh, I hurt myself on a one-foot wave because, you know, I chase waves all around the world that are in the 15 to 20-foot range. Unfortunately, the, the one-foot wave was the one that got me. Since being injured, Jesse has been confined to light duties in the tower. I think everyone has their, you know, their different bits of being a lifeguard, and, yeah, mine's definitely being on the beach, not in the tower. I've broken my thumb. I don't really want to touch it because I don't want to make it any worse. Okay. Oh. I think that would just numb it up a bit so the pain, or I can give you a pain relief. Oh, uh, you don't have both. Martine, a Bondi local, was surfing when things went a little pear shaped. She showed me her thumb and it was like, oh, it looked, it looked disgusting. And I was like, oh, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, just wait for the paramedics to come. Like, because if it is a dislocated one, they'll just put it straight back in for you. But... I reckon it's dislocated. Do you want to put it back in? We're not allowed to. Whippet calls for specialty assistance, an extended care paramedic. Uh, I've just got a lady been surfing. She um, looks like she's either dislocated or broken her thumb. Before the paramedic arrives, Martine attempts some surgery herself. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> that was most, probably the worst thing you could have done. Don't do that. <laughs> just leave it like that there and just keep sucking on that whistle. The green whistle contains methoxyflurane, which relieves pain and can also deliver a feeling of euphoria. <laughs> What's your thumb? What's your thumb? Hey, we're worried about your thumb. What are you doing? <laughs> What's your thumb? She sat next to me and kind of put her leg up on my leg and made herself comfortable, which I didn't mind. <laughs> Jesse, how do you know my name? You told me. <laughs> Everyone knows you. You told me. I didn't tell you my name. Yes, you told me. Yeah, the green whistle had a, a pretty funny effect on her. Um, I went from about a two before she had the whistle to about a ten by the end of it. I've got another child to pick up. The extended care paramedic arrives to relocate Martine's thumb. Oh, shit. Keep sucking on the whistle. Keep on the whistle. Ah, oh, that happened. Unfortunately, it didn't go back in, so she had to go to hospital. <laughs> the car ride would have been funny for the Ambo driver, I tell you that. You know why? She was a character. Martine was taken to Prince of Wales Hospital. After undergoing surgery to reset her thumb, she was discharged five hours later. In Australia last year, 266 people died from drowning. Bondi's lifeguards pride themselves on making sure no lives are lost on their watch. But drownings do occur. It's a male, half about 20 years old. They've got him on the bag now. I'll get back to you in more. This is when training and years of experience count. The critical moments when lifeguards bring people back from the brink of death. Stay, just relax, mate. Just, just relax. relax. We're looking after you, OK? We got notified up in the tower by a member of the public that there might have been someone in trouble in the flags. A Bondi rescue crew member confirms the sighting. Someone out of the water right Beardy and Mouse race from the tower, carrying the medikit and defibrillator. Can I get an ambulance here ASAP? But they've just dragged someone out of the water. We need the ambulance, we need 
all the boys on scene to get this one because this is a drowning. An unconscious man has been pulled from the surf. He is not breathing. Water froths from his lungs and obstructs his airway. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give him a bit of a pump here. We need to establish an airway, and we do have a Goodell airway. Let's yeah, roll Our Goodell holds the patient's tongue down so they don't choke on their tongue, and it opens a clear airway for us to continue EAR on. He started draining, and I knew we had an airway. Get that defib on him. Lifeguards attach the defibrillator. If the man's heart stops beating, he will be given an electric shock to restart his heart. If a shock is administered, anyone touching the patient will be electrocuted as well. Stop CPR. Stop now. Do not touch the patient. Oh, guys, just hands off. Do not touch the patient. No shock advised. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna roll him back again. To help drain water from the man's lungs, lifeguards place him in the recovery position. Mate, if you can hear us, squeeze your right hand, buddy. Can you hear us? Buddy, squeeze that right hand. Just keep draining that water out of him. Can you feel the pulse? Keep going, I'm going, I'm just concentrating. Faintly. Yeah, okay, well then, okay, he's got a pulse. I want that on I want that on The man was found floating between the flags, the safest part of the beach. Just try to get not far out. Yeah, just by himself, though, yeah. Yeah. Beardy notices a telling injury. He wants blood on his head. Are they not? Guys, I'm a bit worried. I want to put this, this neck collar on him. Yeah, mate. definitely. Let's try and straighten up his spine. Lifeguards suspect he's possibly suffered a spinal injury. New recruit Mario is sent to the tower to recover the spinal board. It's the first resuscitation he's been involved in. The adrenaline, you know, like I drive as fast as I could. I stop moving people in front of me. What do you need, brother? Spinal board. Yeah, possible. Does anyone over there know this gentleman? No shot advised. It is safe. Lifeguards must keep the man alive until paramedics take over. Bondi Central to the boys. Um, I just run back to the Ambo, but Ambo is still at Ramwick. Okay, copy that. Um, he's breathing, but he's unconscious at the moment. So, yeah, uh, we keep you a day. Thank you. For one Thank you. Uh, pulse 67, yeah. 71, 83, it's rising, which is good. Yeah. yeah. Do you think maybe it's worth rolling him, put the neck collar on, coming back over? Okay. On three, now so you can drop that for a second. One, two, three, roll. Good work, good work, good work. Good work. We took him out of the recovery position because there were signs of life. He was responsive to us, he was squeezing our hands, and we were happy with the clear airway that we, we had with the Goodell. Mate, can, hey, you, can, you, can you, you open your eyes for us? You can open good your stuff, eyes. Mate, That's good. Stuff. I know it's hard, mate. You need to try and just take a big, deep breath. Calm down for us. If the man has a spinal injury, moving him is risky, but lifeguards must prioritise his airway. You need to spit out, spit out, mate. Need to bomb it, bomb it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Spit it out, mate. Spit it out. Spit it out. Analyzing. Guys, can you move out of the way so the ambulance can get down here, please? Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Out of the way. Of the way. It was a big relief to have the paramedics turn up and take over. Alright, have we got any straps in this door? Yep. Yeah, they're on that. We'll clip them in right now. Can do that? Can what happened to the man is a mystery. The first person to spot him in the water was a nearby swimmer. There was a gentleman that was sort of over my shoulder explaining to me what happened. He noticed him. He was the first one to notice him face down. We was playing with my, my son on the waves, and uh, we saw him facing down, and we saw that he was holding the breath. And we were looking for a little while, and he didn't move. And after that, making, like, convulsions, and uh, I just touched him, and he didn't respond, and I just turned around. He tried to breathe, but I think he got a lot of water on the, on the lungs, and that's why he couldn't breathe. And after we put on the side, he started breathing, but with difficulty. That guy's a real hero for, for noticing it, for one, and getting his head out of the water and getting help to get him back to shore, and he did a really good job. Okay, everybody, on three, one, two, three, lift. Yep. Right, you've got to really try and keep your head straight. Well, heaps of things can, can cause him to be unconscious in the water. It could be a medical illness, it could have been ran into someone, knocked unconscious. He, he left the beach alert, conscious, probably with a bit of water in him, but I think that he was a very lucky man that the situation went it the way it did. From what we know, there was no friends or family around, so he, at the moment he's just a mystery man. The fact that no one knows who he is, and up to this point we really don't know what happened, is um, it's a bit of a sad story. It just would be nice to you know, just work something out, because at the moment I feel a bit like lost with it all, you know? <laughs>
the guy seems to be moving around a lot better in the back of the ambo now, so potentially we could rule out spinal. I don't know. I'm interested to see what happens. I just hope he's all right. After extensive medical treatment, the man's condition stabilised. The mystery surrounding his identity is also solved. And James was reunited with concerned relatives and loved ones. Over the summer, there's been an increase in a lot of marine life. You know, we've got turtles, we've got whales, we've got penguins, we've got seals, we've got fish. And one thing that does eat these things is a shark. This isn't the lifeguard's first close call with sharks this season. Wow, straight underneath him. Add record incidents up and down the coast, and everyone is on high alert. Look the size of them. Maxi and trainee Anthony Glick are following a school of salmon 250 metres offshore. There's been a few shark sightings in the area recently, so they just launched a jet ski as a precautionary measure, just to have a quick patrol, see if they can see anything fishy, and uh, report back soon. It actually looks very sharky out there right now. Overcast day, murky water. Fish, mate. I remember saying, mate, let's wrap it up. We've been out for about an hour. Uh, as I look out to sea, I saw a couple of birds lift. And I just saw this fin just cruising through the water. Yeah, he's a little scared. You know, Clint was telling me to slow down and stop doing quick movements. Maxi must confirm if the fin is a shark or just a dolphin. Then another call comes in at the tower. One of my lifeguards, Jesse speaking. Okay. There's a shark. Everything's happening. Um, yeah, right, so wait, I'll send someone up there right now. Oh, wait. We've got someone having a fin at North Bondi RSL. Dino and Jake respond to the reported incident at North Bondi, while Jesse waits for Maxi's response. It's 100%. 100% a shark. Maxie said he'd definitely seen it, and uh, look, there's nothing else we can do but hit the button. Here we go, shark alarm. It's an overcast weekday, but lifeguards are stretched both in and out of the water. Here we go, shark alarm. Everything's happening. There was just a quiet day and now there's a shark. Someone's having a fit up North Bondi. All hands on deck. Dino and Jake race to locate the injured woman. Shark alarm's blaring and we got the rhino parked in the way so we didn't get run over. And we're sort of assessing the patient. Right, yeah. And you can feel my hands everything like that? Yes. Okay, pull back on my on my hands with your toes. Pull back. Take your head down. Pull, pull, as you know, yeah. that's it. Any pain when you do that? What about when you push down like that? Any pain? She had quite a serious wound on the back of her head, and then we started to be concerned about concussion. Yes. This is Leela. She's 21. She's just had a stack on a skateboard. Uh, we've done a, a primary assessment. Um, there's obviously some fair egg on her head and yeah. some blood coming out near my hand. These guys have been uh, looking after her. Yeah. Uh, she did fit before we originally come down for a fit. Yeah. No previous illness. She lost consciousness. She's wearing double seconds. There's a solid egg under my arm. You can really see the blood. What day is it today? Today is. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You're gonna have to close the beach, confirm shark spotting from the boys out there on the jet ski. The alarm went off and we have to just get the first wave in. Pretty, pretty scary. Look at that spear fisherman out there. He's shark bait. Yeah, Max, it's most probably in line with second ramp, about 200 out. There's a shark, buddy. Yeah, I'll get in if I were you, buddy. You know, as soon as the beach was clear, I uh, we went back out to where we last saw it and tried to see it, but there was no success. Nasty blow on the head, but I think the, the hair sort of absorbed a lot of the blood and helped it uh, clot. At North Bondi, Brazilian skateboarder Layla 
may have suffered a concussion. She's prepped for hospital and further tests. On the water, lifeguards want to reopen the beach to swimmers, but can't be sure there isn't still a shark in the bay. They call for assistance. We only usually call Lifesaver 1 if something really big happens, where, you know, we need the bird's eye view. They were very, very low, and I was like, they're, they're onto something here. We are to go shark. It's probably no bigger than a meter. I don't know if Max has seen a different shark, but, yeah, Lifesaver 1 said that they've seen a, a one-metre shark. You know, it's definitely the shark that we saw was bigger than one metre. There's not much more we can do for you guys uh, today. We'll be heading back to the rest of the day. Thanks for the call. Copy in Lifesaver 1. Follow Lifeguard now. Lifesaver 1 heads back to base, but Bondi's lifeguards patrol for another hour to make sure no sharks, big or small, remain in the bay. The beach is open, guys. <laughs> Diving into the ocean is a transformational, some might even say divine experience. But is it a place where one's misdeeds can be washed away? I was attending a patient towards North Bondi, and as I was finishing up, I looked to the very north corner. Uh, Central, like, oh, what have we got going on in the corner? I can see 30, 40 people standing in the rip with some sort of very strange behaviour or, or a baptism or something going on. Lycra, frenetic dancing, even zombies. Barely raise an eyebrow at Bondi. But every now and then, something completely different happens. All right. What's going on down there? I look to the very north corner and I can see 30, 40 people standing in the rip with some sort of very strange behaviour or, or a baptism or something going on. Ah, uh, Dean, there's some religious guy up there doing some religious stuff. There was yelling and I think there was holding hands and yeah, everybody was quite involved in the group. <laughs> Torben Sondergaard has travelled all the way from Denmark to spread the word of his church. It was people from, uh, from different places who came and they repented because they believed in Jesus and they got baptized in water, as you saw. But then something extra happened. Then the Holy Spirit come over them, as we read in the Bible, and they start to speak in tongues. I was just baptized in there with Torben and um, it was just the most amazing experience because before that I felt a lot of struggle in me. Because when you go down, it's like burying your, your sins. And when you raise back up, and now you're free. You, you, I experience freedom, and I really feel it. I think I was offered a healing of some sort, but then I realised Jesse's in the tower, and I think he'd be the ideal man for a healing. Jesse, a member of Maroubra's notorious Bra Boys, has had his share of life's turmoils. Plus, right now, he's also dealing with some physical injuries. One of the people down there of. Uh... I overheard Dean speaking about my uh, fractured pelvis and fractured back. He can come to us and we'll pray for him. We'll pray for him and, and definitely get healed because that's the promise of God. He said that believers will lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. So if that's the promise of God and we see that every day, people getting healed, I'm sure that Jesse can also get healed. Hopefully I wake up in the morning and um, I'm fine. Unable to leave the tower, Jesse has to settle for a prayer from North Bondi. If they had to cure my pelvis down there and my hip and my coccyx, they would have had to cure a few more things too. A few little demons in my head, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Next time on Bondi Rescue, Yee! a man dislocates his hip joint. <laughs> but it's his friend who needs emergency treatment. A woman fully clothed and drowning. And a mother's worst nightmare. Oh, as her child goes missing in the water. I'm sure he'll come back. Oh.